you started working with Big. How did that even happen? All right, so I met Big probably in 95, 94, 94. And me and Big Cap, rest in peace, from Brooklyn, we DJed his single release party. Mm-hmm. He had a record called Party and Bullshit. Mm-hmm. He was supposed to be signed to Uptown MCA, mm-hmm. but I think Puffy lost his deal with Uptown MCA, and then he moved it over to Bad Boy in uh, Ariston. Mm-hmm. So that's how I got to meet him. And then that one year, I'm doing the... Uh, we, we used to do this event called the uh, Players Bowl in Atlantic City. And I'm down there with Miss Jones, Ed Lover. That's the team I was working with at the time. And then Puff's doing the Mary J. Blige album release party in the same hotel. We in Atlantic City somewhere. It's the Mary J. Blige My Life album. Yeah. So at that party, he came to me and said, yo, what you doing, man? I said, yeah, hey, what's up? He goes, I think I want you to go on the road with Big. What do you think about that? Now you gotta remember, big, big wasn't yet. big yet. Yeah. He only had like one or two songs out, if that. Maybe he had that unbelievable and juicy, maybe like that. So I'm thinking about it. It's not a it's not a yes. It's it's um let me think. Cause I'm like in my mind, I'm like, yo, I'm DJ enough. I'm getting my own I'm starting to bubble on my own a little bit. You know what I mean? So I thought about it, I said yes, and I think it was one of the greatest decisions I've ever made in my life. Because to this day, to this day, people ask me what it was like being on the road with the Yeah. And you know, it, it wasn't like it was a lengthy situation no, either. No. So you came into the game with him being a brand new artist, and then how did that, what was it like watching him transition from a regular rapper to everybody's favorite. I think it was like every show you've seen growth. You'd be in one city and there'd be some haters. You'd be in another city and it's super love. And then he drops a new record and it's like whatever. I'd, for me personally, and this is me saying this for me because I've seen it with my own eyes. Personally, Biggie didn't come a household name until he dropped Big Papa. Big Papa was the record that the whole entire country fell in love with. And the reason why I say that because there's regional factors like where you're from the east, the west, the south, the north. The Big Papa, when he dropped Big Papa, I don't care where you was from, you loved Big Papa. Yes. So you also saw the east coast, west coast situation and how that yeah. stirred up. And, you know, now you're in the media world, still as a DJ, but in that realm. Was it media hype or was it a real thing? I think a lot of it was the lines just got crossed. People thought they were doing their job, but at the same time, they didn't know how to protect the culture. Mm. And that's where we all failed. Everybody failed because nobody protected the culture. And bigger than that, Nobody got to protect those two guys who died. That was the worst thing. Like, we never... People always die. But the magnitude of two, these two guys who supposedly had a little bit of beef with each other, dying, that hurt. That hurt the industry. That hurt people. I almost damn near quit my job. Everything after I lost, after I lost big. I was lost. I'm sorry. You had to go through that.